This is Joy 99.7 FM. Good evening and welcome to Personality Profile. Listen, I look forward to these conversations and I'm sure you do as well. Well, this week we've got a very special one for you. I'm Lexus Bill. Welcome aboard and you can tell family friends to tune in to watch us live on TV and on social media, our Joy Entertainment platforms and of course on Joy 99.7 FM. So personality profile is meant to celebrate people who are doing amazing things here in Ghana for Mother Ghana. Yeah, people who have achieved a lot for themselves and for their families and for the country as a whole. Some we call role models and even better this week some we adore as mothers. Yeah, this past weekend, the world celebrated mothers, Mother's Day weekend, of course. Where will we be without our mothers? Yes, from our very first cry to our very <laughs> first food. I particularly loved food, so you can imagine what my mom went through. Yeah, so we celebrate them today. And we thought to handpick some amazing women in Ghana to celebrate. We've got one such amazing person in our seat today here on Personality Profile. You will love her. Yeah, you would get to know a bit more about her and we'll get to know about her motherhood journey and her journey to the high office where we're sitting, actually literally in the presidency. Yes, we're in her office <laughs> nestled in beauty, some flowers and lovely pictures that we'll get to know a lot more about. So my guest today is an astute development practitioner, an academic, a Ghanaian politician, she holds a bachelor's degree in home science from the University of Ghana and a master's in food science. She lectured at the University of Ghana as a lecturer at the Department of Home Science from 1976 to 1982. She eventually became the head of the department. She has also worked at the United Nations in the Women in Fisheries Project in various capacities in Uganda, Ethiopia, Congo, Namibia. Yeah. In 2005, uh, from 2005 to 2008 or about, she worked under the government of President John Ajikum Kufo as the Deputy Minister for Manpower, Youth and Employment. She represented Ayawaso West Wogon constituency in Parliament for two terms. But currently, she's the first female Chief of Staff for Ghana. Yeah, I can tell you, we're in good company and we're nestled in her beautiful office here at the Presidency. Honorable Akusia Freema or say or parrot. We affectionately call her mummy, <laughs> and rightly so. Welcome, mummy. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. And I must say, you're looking good. <laughs> hey, mummy. Thank you. And then your birthday, pony. There be na eh eh birthday November. Oh really? What is that? How, how far away are we? Uh, just a few weeks. Just on a the few 5th weeks. of June. My God, will uh, you save this dress for the birthday? Because this dress is marvelous. <laughs> My Maybe goodness. I should repeat it. You should, you should. Well, the, I'm, I'm curious, this fabric is quite, you know, unique. It looks like a very, you know, rich fabric. What's it called? Well, it's, it's an old design. Uh -huh. um, and it's called a kufu. A kufu. Hey. <laughs> did, you, did you pick it because of <laughs> His Excellency? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. Wow. But uh, a kufu is uh, quite a popular yeah. design that a yeah. lot of us women in MVP have. Yeah. We all have so many colors. Okay, okay, and, uh, okay. And so it comes in different colors. I kind colors. of like it because it's an old design. Yeah. And somehow, as you rightly say, it, 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 it's quite uh, interesting. Got an upper life, a little bit. Mummy, mummy. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> because this really looks, guys, look, the, the, it's, it's actually purple, isn't it? Like, that's yes, purple, this eh? Is purple, and yes. yellow. And yes. the yellow, uh, what, designs have been beaded. <laughs> hey, yeah. Mommy, mommy. Yeah, I, I have to thank my tailor for it. Oh, it's a so man who did it. Yes. Wow, yes. I think I think he deserves a raise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope thank he you so doesn't much. hear you. Uh, you hope? <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad that mm, today we get mm. to spend time with mm. you in your very lovely office, and mm. of course, mm. the world celebrated Mother's Day. And we thought, no, we need to celebrate you for all that mm. you achieved. In fact, when I got to your office and I saw the pictures of family, I think it's your daughter over there and your grandson. Is that yes, your my grandson? grandson. That's the uh, smallest grandson. Okay. Uh, I saw how uh, much. He, he just turned a, a year. Oh. Uh, 
last month. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. And my do one of my daughters. Okay. How, how many children do you have? I have four children. All girls? Uh, three girls and one boy. Oh, he's a lucky fella. Uh, he is. <laughs> I can imagine. He doesn't think so. He doesn't think he so. He thinks he's swamped <laughs> by too many women. Wow. Well, so. we'll kill for that. <laughs> so, so, so tell us about the, the motherhood journey. Is any of them t taken after you, though? Uh, no, not yet. Not and yet. And I, uh, I hope one day some one of them would. But mm, you, you said that regrettably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like you really wish they would. What <laughs> are they? They into? are very supportive. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I'll say I have four children, um, and the girls are the oldest. Yeah. I must say though the the last two. Mm. Which the, this one and the boy yeah. are actually twins. Oh, so they were all born on the same day. That's beautiful. It's just that the girl came thirty minutes before. Oh, okay. Ahead of <laughs> yeah, and yeah. She, she acts like she's the older one. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> but it's been um, an interesting yeah. uh, journey looking after them. Mm. They are all into. Uh, various professions okay what are they into um the girl is in human resource okay development she and her husband are in u.s okay the second one is the is the lawyer okay. profession so um, works at a, a bank okay. in ghana as yeah. the group head of legal okay and uh the Twins, the girl is a medical doctor. Okay. Actually practicing in the UK. All right. Um, she, she will soon finish her consultancy uh, level of yeah. achievement in obstetrics and gynecology. Okay. So I'm hoping that immediately she finishes that, she will head home <laughs> and, and be with us. Yeah. But the boy is an IT specialist. Oh. But very much into uh, business. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. You've but got a lovely none of them is into politics. Uh, but I must say that <laughs> I, I think my granddaughter will be. Your granddaughter? Yes. <laughs> How old is she? <laughs> oh, she is now uh, 18. 18. What makes you think she will be in politics? Uh, because of the way she follows my work ah. and I mean they follow me for campaigning yeah she volunteers for I mean 2020 she volunteered for social media wow. work she's the type who will uh, spray her hair <laughs> into the MPP colors wow so I, I suspect, but I'm watching. <laughs> you know, you, 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 look, if, you, if you're watching this on the video, you can literally see the contrast when you're talking about how none of them is into politics, and then now your granddaughter, and you light it up. You literally... Yeah, I, I do, and, I do. And I, and I sure you're going to mentor I her. Think, I think she will. Get be. there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. Mm. But what has motherhood th taught you? A lot. Mm. It's, it's um, a very, what will I say, uh, complex and yet a rewarding uh, experience. Mm. Motherhood uh, helps you to be appreciative of human beings. Yeah. Because when you help bring them into the world mm. but most importantly you begin to appreciate individual differences mm. for what they can bring on board i'm very close to my children it's no debate we are very close family yeah not close to the exclusion of others mm -hmm. but close in the way we relate with each other okay and okay. you find that people have different skills and you you see that also people have different challenges hmm. so you, you learn as a mother to understand that the world is not just one 
and that people do have different ideas, people have different paths yeah. they want to follow, and that's it is okay. Yeah. And you need to learn on how to uh, nurture everyone according mm. to their talents. Yeah. What has been the most mm. challenging part? The, I think the most uh, challenging part is um, thinking that everybody will be an uh, academic and or being in very formal uh, work. However, my son decided he will not. He doesn't want to be uh, employed. He wants to employ himself. <laughs> that was something that we weren't expecting. Actually, I was very happy with it in the sense, but dad was, you know, a very strict person. Mm -hmm. He has been in the UN, he believes in a steady job and yeah. progressing into your, uh, you know, in your career and yeah. so on. Yeah. So this whole idea of setting up your own business with a rough start yeah. was not something that he was too keen on. But within a short time, he has started investing in him. Okay. Because he saw that he was a serious person wow. and that he really wanted to uh, do something mm. for himself. And I, I think it's important for young people these days where there are opportunities for setting up your own business mm. to uh, do so because you can't always uh, be employed by others mm. but if you have a passion and you have your own ideas there there are a number of programs in the country that can really help you mm. to do something for yourself and we, we should encourage in the world the public service cannot in anywhere in the world the public service cannot absorb everybody yeah. but the entrepreneurship <coughs> is the private sector yeah. is where you create more jobs and also it unearths your own creativity i know the past <laughs> couple of months the government has <laughs> been you know, encouraging mm. Ghanaians to get into entrepreneurship, to start businesses, to mm. get, you know, put their yeah. ideas to test and all. It looks like you have a specimen in your home. I, I do. <laughs> yes. I yes, do, so. and I will encourage it. Yeah, I that's think really good. it's rough, and so yeah. what? You should, uh, you know, th life isn't just a smooth path. Yeah. You can fall and get up and move forward. And, and through the, the learning, you become better. it's very rewarding. Yes, it is, absolutely. <laughs> mm. Now, Top three parenting advice. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> three pa parenting yes. advice. For the many parents and mothers the who parents, are listening to you. What I will say is that make your children your friends. Okay, that's one. For me, um, even in my own career, I've had very sound advice from my own children. Mm. They are out there more than I do. And they hear more. They see more, they, they tend to be uh, more, you know, open yeah. in society. So you hear a lot and they, you should make it possible for them to reach you. Mm. So I'm friends with my children and we are as a family very uh, much, you know, together and think together and criticize each other and support each other. So parents must make friends with their children. Mm. Should not be a big gap between where people are facing challenges. You see it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you nurture them. Therefore, they don't get into a pit that you need a crate to uh, remove from a, a, a big pit. So yeah. it is important that you uh, make friends with your children. Also recognize uh, the differences that children have, that people are born with different talents. God created us in a, a way for us to be, uh, you know, different. Yeah. 
all together we make the world better. So it is good to recognize that not all children will be lawyers or doctors, so on, or academicians, but recognizing their own uh, skills and helping them along the way. Okay, then mm. one more. And also, don't be afraid to correct your children. Okay. Uh, it's, I think this is one thing that people, maybe it derives from not being friends. If the children are going, uh, are going astray, put your foot down. Yeah. Because yeah. it's part of uh, nurturing. Okay. So yeah. parents, this is what I see. This is Parenting 101 <laughs> <laughs> from Mommy. <laughs> parenting yeah. 101. And, and we're grateful that you shared these with us. But we want to get to know you a bit more. Yes. I know you're from Yamwasi. Hey, you, you've done oh, your my homework. Oh, Miami Research Farm. <laughs> 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 so, so, and you were there not long ago. I mean, a few months ago. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, even last month. Oh, last month, yeah. Last month, I was there for a, a big deba. Mm. Not for me. But I was the guest of honor. Yes. It's the Yamwasi people in the diaspora. Okay. I put up an edifice, a learning center. Right. In Yamwasi. Mm -hmm. And I felt I needed to go and support them. You had to. I mean, so that's where they invited you're me from, and I so went yeah. there. And I was so pleased yeah. that far away, they still think they should come and contribute. And there is, uh, I can see a number of such initiatives mm -hmm. within, uh, in the uh, Yamwase. Mm. And it, it seems to me that uh, people who have opportunities outside communities, if they go back and do things in the community, it helps to lift the yeah. uh, standard of living yeah. of the community and also motivate yeah. the young ones to say, okay, we can also uh, do something. Good stuff. No, yeah. that's, that was impressive. For, I saw that. Yeah. But so is that where you nice. grew up? No, where, at all. Where did in you grow fact, up? I grew up in Kumase. Okay. I grew up in Kumasi. Tell me about the beginnings. I mean, yeah, well, um, I started my elementary school, primary, in uh, what they now call state experimental, but it used to be called division okay. at the time that we were young. And where, where in Kumasi? Uh, Kumasi, just around uh, where the um, race course, okay. former race course yeah, yeah. area is, uh, I will say, uh, um, it's Ashtown but extended. Yeah. But anyway, I didn't stay to for the middle school in Kumasi. I was sent to a boarding school, typical of all the girls in, uh, in my family. Okay. My father took uh, all of us. What was your father? Had, what was he into? <laughs> it, my father was a businessman and a politician. Ah. Yeah. Would he say he was well-to-do? I, I, I will say, I agree mm. that he was. He well was, to huh? Do. How many children did he have? <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> 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 Let's say we were over 40. Wow. Yeah. How and many we wives? know each other. Oh, you know each other? Uh, we know each other. Many, many wives. But by the time he how passed many? away, there were uh, three living okay. uh, children. He passed away in 1988. And there were three mothers yeah. living. But 40 children, over 40 over children. Over 40 children. Do you have a WhatsApp group? <laughs> no, we you actually, all need a WhatsApp group. No, we do. We have do? A, a family platform. Okay. For, uh, and we have a union. A union? Yeah. And it's wow. important to have that union <laughs> because the some of the older children, uh -huh. uh, I will say, are younger than grandchildren, given the spectrum of yes, uh, okay. the uh, many uh, yeah. mothers that we've had. I get that. So let's say my father's first uh, uh, wife, mm -hmm. Mampeni, that we all respectfully call her, her last born 
is older than my uh, mother's firstborn. Yes. So you can see that and there were younger ones that came. Below. So <laughs> we do have a CSA union. And it is, we have a platform that uh, we uh, post things in. Yeah. And it is important for us to know our children, our children's children, and so on. The family and is so big. It's not just yeah. a, it's a union. We like and it's a union. Guys. And we have even <laughs> every quarter, we have a Zoom uh, meeting. Yeah. So that those in the diaspora and us here in Ghana, we, it's very, it's very, interesting, uh, very interesting one. Wow. On 24th of uh, each year, we have um, a family uh, carol service. Okay. For who are here, and they can now live uh, stream. Yes, yes. And join in. So we are very happy family. It's but we like just it. many. It looks like it. <laughs> Invite me together. for this year's one. I, w I want to meet the whole I, family. I will remember <laughs> that. <laughs> wow, that's nice. Yes. Okay, so growing so, up in a yes, big family but like as that. As I said, mm -hmm. I spent, I went to St. Monica's and that's where I spent a lot of time. Okay. Because middle school and then secondary school. And St. Monica's, I would say, was one place that shaped my life. Mm. It's where all my father's daughters went. Okay. And the nuns know that the old man will bring children. So they <laughs> reserve spaces for us. <laughs> and, but you learn this, uh, to be respectful. You yeah. also know how to do chores and uh, take your studies seriously. At the same time, uh, strengthen your moral upbringing. Yeah. So, I, I learned a lot in St. Monica's. What's the biggest lesson you learned there? <laughs> what will I say? I, I think uh, for the, what I learned in St. Monica's is that you have mainly white nuns from uh, Whitby in UK. However, the training was not so focused on foreign. Okay. It was, they brought in a lot of cultural training mm. to the extent that they will bring the traditional cultural uh, Nyomkro and Kete group to come and train us. Uh. And we have cultural nights where uh, various tribes in the country whether you are Newe, Shanti, Fanti, Ga, we all had these competitions. And the competitions, well, it's not just, let's say, middle school people. Mm. It was, the Monikets was the convent. Mm. So you have middle babies, mm. which are the very young ones. Then you have the middle school. Then you have the secondary school. Then you have training college and midwifery. Okay. All on one compound. Okay. So we do things together. Yeah. You learn to do, uh, do your parts within your session of the convent. Yet there is opportunity for you to mix. Okay. And because of that, you also pick a lot of uh, mentoring yeah. from the various parts of the uh, convent. So... It's, I, I learned about uh, accepting people from different tribes. I learned about living in harmony yeah. and also respecting your culture at the same time imbibing other, um, you know... Um, Ideologies Ide and values. Yes, yeah. and values. Is, is, is that where I'll you... i the values. Yeah, the values. Yeah. Is, is that where you picked up or you shaped your career path or the profession that you would want to do? My career path, yes. I wanted uh, to do be in the science field. Mm. So in St. Monica's, I did quite well in science. Mm. Uh, the only thing that changed my uh, school 
is that when I finished O level, I did the St. Monica's only had uh, A level for uh, arts students. So okay. those days, the headmasters and mistresses would meet, and then they assign uh, uh, students to various schools. So I and my friend were posted to uh, Abri Girls so th for us to do science. Be posted. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> For a so I, I learned a lot <laughs> also from a boy. Yeah. So even yeah. I, I I like the idea of I, I I was it wasn't planned, but yeah. because I had to do science and I got to a break, I learned also mm. that there are other um, places yeah. beyond Saint Monica's where also good uh, moral training. Good values mm. are also. Uh, now you make we the seconds and all that. He is very proud. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so uh, you went further to the University of Ghana yes. to study mm. science, home science. Home is that science, it? yes. Yes. Now that's where I got my path. The whilst we were there, mm -hmm. the department had apparently being just started under the faculty of our Greek. So the uh, head of department and staff came to Abri mm. and actually gave lectures for us who were leaving the, uh, were in such form. And I, I, at that time I had planned to go and study abroad. In fact, I had a, um, an acceptance letter from McGill University okay. to do virology. But when they came <laughs> to talk to us, I thought, ah, this is where I belong. <laughs> let, let me not uh, forget about this and go to University of Ghana. So that's how I ended up Wow. In home science, and I never regretted it. It looks like you enjoyed it because you actually did a master's in home science as well. Yes, I did it in food in uh, Canada. In Canada. But the same uh, yeah, kind the same of course. training, yes. And you came back to lecture it. Yes. And the home science in the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. It's, it's, it trains you in a broader way. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, um, you are science based. You see how the, mm -hmm. you integrate agriculture to into um, the home and to uh, the uh, small scale uh, yeah. farmers and women who are into post harvest work. Yeah. So it's it's you learn a lot. So you see that in the faculty in the university campus, all science people are seen at M Block doing psychology. They are seen at economics department doing economics. So, and then you see them at botany and uh, zoology department doing uh, science uh, work. So it's quite so broad. It's very broad. Okay. But you have a holistic training. Okay, that's good. But what was your first employment? Let's, well, was it a lecturing or you had to do other things before you came back to lecture? No, uh, my first employment was a pupil teacher. When I finished this form, it was uh, soon after the uh, 1966 school. Okay. So the um, Russian lecturers or teachers who were at St. Monica's doing science left, had to leave. So when they left, there was a gap. So the uh, sisters asked two of us to come back and to bridge, take a, a year to uh, help in, uh, in teaching. teaching. Okay. So I was in St. Monica's as a teacher, mm. secondary school, as a teacher, but teaching the lower classes, yeah. uh, form one and two, okay. Okay. in uh, basic uh, general science. Yeah. And also at that time, I was a sport, uh, sports person. I ah. could uh, run and I could do 
especially hockey and, okay. and netball. Beautiful. But th not these days. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first employment. Mommy, you are explaining. I didn't ask about these days. <laughs> Yes, well, these days I can't run much. <laughs> but the yeah. second employment that is for me very critical was uh, being a research assistant uh, at ESA. Okay. I worked with Mrs. Florence uh, Sai, who was then uh, a research fellow, mm. and we worked on an integrated rural fisheries development project. And the one I, for the UN? It was for uh, CEDA. For CEDA, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it was sponsored by CEDA. But it had many factions. Mm. And our session was to look at the role of women in fisheries, mm. uh, post-harvest handling of fish. So I got an opportunity. I mean, I was trusted by my uh, supervisor, mm -hmm to go into the field, go to all these fishing communities in central region and interact with fisher folk, in uh, both the uh, fishermen and women, mm. sit in mummy trucks and go all the way from markets to markets, just following women to see what they go through, how the fish uh, is being marketed, what's... Uh, and the challenges they face. So it meant that you need to sit on the mummy truck yeah, yourself. Yeah. And when it breaks down and the women <laughs> put their second cloth on the floor to sleep while the car is being, <laughs> and you are in the dress, <laughs> then you know that <laughs> you haven't learned. Yeah. So those are the things I learned why the second cloth of women is yeah. important. Yeah. Because it, it helped. Then uh, th there was a point that I was in a mini skirt <laughs> and lying on the floor. The <laughs> bare pavement didn't help at all. So, but it, it's I learned a lot, mm. and it's this rural fisheries development project helped me to get back into the to get into the United Nations when I I was a lecturer in Legon. Okay, because I followed up when I came back from Canada uh, to teach. I followed up to do some research on how you can dry fish in a more hygienic manner using solar dryers and, you know, working with the engineering department of uh, f the faculty of agri. Mm -hmm. And through that, more or less, I was discovered by the FAO and then uh, asked to work in Nigeria. Okay. Oh. Wow. Yes. And then, of course... This was after you, you had lectured for a while, right? Yes. Okay. After okay. I lectured for a while. So I went into NGO, mm. uh, the UN work. Yeah. But when I came back from the UN, I didn't come back to uh, lecture. lecture. What did you come to do? I, I joined the Netherlands Development Organization. Mm. It's also, during my work with the UN, I also saw the other aspect of my uh, skill. That I've been a lecturer in the classroom, mm -hmm. and now I have an opportunity to work at community level. And that made me uh, feel that yeah. I can now switch into more community-based work. Okay. So I joined... Uh, the Alliance mm -hmm. Development Organization, and again, it gave me opportunity to work in various development projects across the country. Okay. It's from then that I went to Action Aid. Oh, okay. Yeah, so then I became the NGO woman. Yes, it looks <laughs> like it. <laughs> and I appreciate that work, because mm. uh, I'm doing a, a master's in development communications, so yes. I appreciate the kind Very of work important. that you did. Very important. Uh, uh, yeah. Development of uh, communication is very specific yeah. and it's it's important because we do a lot mm -hmm. but we don't know how to and uh, get Engage people to the adopt and all new those. Yeah. ideas and yeah. so on so good stuff yeah. anyway good job yeah. so at what point did politics come in is politics came in a long way 
One, when I was a student in Legon, I was the treasurer for Progress uh, Party Club okay. in, on campus. And I always say that Kwam Nabatels then was the president of our club. Okay. <laughs> and we had the uh, likes of Safwa Du as a major patron mm. of that. Then also, when as a lecturer, I joined the uh, UNC branch <laughs> of, I will say, our UP, we split into two, the uh, Popular Party, Front Party, and then the UNC. So I was in the UNC bit. Okay. And that's where we lost miserably. <laughs> the, the two uh, parties went apart, and then yeah. the CPP went through us. And uh, that was when Le Mans won. Yes. So <laughs> that's my political background. So it had always been Bef there. The interest had always been it there. It has always been there as mm -hmm. a student, as a lecturer. Mm. I was the self-appointed uh, campus uh, uh, organizer. <laughs> uh, I worked with the late um, uh, prof, uh, Dr. Joe uh, Geke, okay. who was the uh, became a chief at Mepe mm -hmm. in the Volta region. So we we were the activists mm. of uh, UNC. Then, of course, we lost. And then, uh, when I left Action Aid in twenty. I was in 2004. I then decided to be an MP at the famous constituency, Ayawasu, Ayawasu West, West Wogon. Boy, oh boy. That was uh, a tough one, wasn't it, in the beginning? At the beginning, it was tough because removing an incumbent is not the easiest thing to yes. do. Yes. And... It meets with a lot of ch both internal and external challenges. At the time, what do you think made you won? Uh, made you win that uh, <coughs> primary? The the primaries. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's also the nature of uh, uh, the relationship. The at the time, the people felt that the MP was a bit uh, distant from the uh, them. Mm. for the electoral uh, college, not just the electoral college, especially even the student population. Mm. So I, uh, given my background and experience, I did uh, uh, find that building up good relation, being accessible, helped me to win my famous uh, primaries. You know, I did, uh, my primaries was done uh, twice. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was quite topical oh, at the time. Yes, it was. But it uh, went well twice. And how was the eight-year experience? The two terms yeah. you spent in the, Iowa it, was well gone. Yeah, the two-term experience is very interesting. One again, I, I say that when you are an MP, you need to know that you represent people, and people have different needs. And people need to have you be there for them. Mm. I, you know, University of Ghana was my stronghold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I spent a lot of time with, in hallways, debates, SRC programs, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I was there. And the, some of my supporters, I will say, and they know, they, they will admit, it's Otukono <laughs> and Okuja to Ablawa. For they when were, they were students. When, <laughs> when they were students. <laughs> At the so time, yeah. <laughs> this, it was that uh, broad base. Okay. And I, I really, even given my age, I was more closer to the student yeah. uh, population and supporting uh, uh, various halls with little things that make their life comfortable and it, it worked why did you <laughs> why did you step down after just two terms i stepped down and in fact i took uh my plan was to break the cycle of one term mp 
for Ayawasu West, oh God. That has been the norm. And people said, as for Ayawasu, you don't go more than one ten. I wanted to break the eight. <laughs> you wanted uh, to break I the told, eight. I, told, uh, <laughs> I wanted to break the four. So I broke the four. But I didn't but break the eight. <laughs> no, I didn't want to break the eight because <laughs> I had planned that I would do two terms, but I'll also support the party in another way. And that's why when I, uh, I stepped down and joined the campaign team of then candidates so, uh, so that I worked full time there for four years. A bit of talk around that time suggested that you were just scared of the NDC. Because at the time, oh. the first election, they had closed in. Well, I don't think so. Because one, NDC can't win Ayawaso West Wogo. That's number one. That's my belief. And none of the candidates, you see, whether it's uh, Tumbuafo or Iwadako. <laughs> We, we had a very respectful relationship, but they they never they never they, threatened they knew you. knew that yeah, I will win. Okay. And I must say that we always had very decent uh, campaign. Mm. I mean, nobody will say any toxic stuff up yeah. around. You had your point yeah. you made. But I always said, even where they were much younger and they thought the student population would follow them, they followed the older woman. Mm -hmm. who what was the <laughs> biggest challenge during that period as MP of IAS West Wagon? It's, I think the biggest challenge is getting the uh, needs of communities that, that you serve to government, mm. to let them respond. Because people do have needs, and even though an MP is not supposedly a development person, you are the one they rallied around. You are the one they know. You are the one they voted for. And therefore, it's incumbent on you to ensure that their needs are well articulated. Yeah. And it's not just asking a question in Parliament, but actually getting... Uh, the uh, ministries to respond. And I think that is something we should work on in this country, that when the uh, uh, MPs bring needs, we, we should uh, respond, to, respond them to them. And I mean, according to our, uh, the country's uh, pocket, but also for even ministers to engage. And that's one thing that we tend to, uh, I'm facilitating here, okay. to make sure that uh, questions that are asked from parliament, uh, whether it's from opposition or not, once it affects, we are in government, it affects us. So yeah. how do the ministers continue, uh, follow up and make sure that some answers are given okay. in terms of okay. their engagement yeah. with their community. Okay. Mm. Now, um, you, you joined the campaign team, of course, of uh, Nanata Danko yeah. and you are the first female chief of staff mm. now. Tell me about this role. It's a very um, diverse role. Basically, you are coordinating the work of government. So the, what I see is to make sure that policies and programs are working. And w not just in isolation, but where there is synergy, you ensure that it, it is mm. uh, happening. See, the, the structure of our governance does not uh, help in the uh, integration or uh, co uh, cooperation and coordination among ministries. Mm. So in, in this chair, when uh, you, you facilitate that to happen. Mm. So if there are issues that come up, you make sure that the right people are at the right table 
to talk to each other and to find the way that they can work together to an address a problem. Which, which of the mm. roles do you enjoy more, being an MP or being in the seat? I like this seat. You like this seat? Mm. <laughs> it's more... <laughs> but it gives you an overview of everything. Yeah. It's really... And yeah. it's both administrative, the politics is yeah. there. It's, it's, it's uh, very interesting, interesting, but very stressful. I can imagine. Uh, I mean, very stressful. The other day, at 9 o'clock, you were still in the office. Oh, and by I was 9 o'clock, I told you, it's, it's, uh, very it's, early. it's only the beginning of the evening. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, president leaves here <laughs> past midnight. So when I'm leaving here at 10, 30, 11, then it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Mom still didn't like that. <laughs> no, she does. When they, they need to leave this uh, uh, office for, let's say, 9.30. <laughs> oh, ma, can we, uh, can I leave uh, earlier today? <laughs> At 9.30? 9, 9. Wow. Because th this office is open to yeah. quite late. Yeah. And the point is that getting the administrative work, you also need to listen to people. Yeah, you have yeah. to listen to MPs. You have to listen to party people. You have to listen to ministers mm. and CEOs and whatnot. What's so the you stretch your day in a way that creates opportunity mm. for them to come and see you. What's the biggest criticism you've heard about your office? <laughs> The biggest criticism is that they want to see me, and yet Mamsi has not given them appointment. <laughs> because they see that I want to see my one three weeks. <laughs> I, I've been phoning, and, uh, I've been, and she hasn't given me. <laughs> and, and, and I get uh, messages like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. However, what they don't realize is that everybody also wants to see you. Yeah. So she does a, a good job. I'll tell you one of the scheduling. criticisms I have heard. Yes. Is that you are a soft chief of staff. Have you heard that? <laughs> well. Have you heard that before? Uh, if I have heard that, I don't hear much <laughs> about that because the people I work with here have a different view. <laughs> but I come out, I, I'm, yeah. I'm a mother, but mm. I scold, I scold mm -hmm. and I, uh, I'm tough when it comes to certain uh, boundaries. Yeah. But I also have empathy mm. uh, for people. And besides, you know, people need sometimes a shoulder to cry on. You have to offer it. Yeah. You have to offer it. But where we need to be straightened, you'll be straightened. That's not a problem for me at all. Okay. Mm. Now, do you have any plan to influence who becomes the next MP in your constituency? I've heard those allegations by incumbent. The incumbent can never say that. The incumbent can never say that. The incumbent is, uh, I will say, one of the most uh, visible persons in my office. Comes here regularly. Mm. Comes here regularly. I know that the genesis of her coming in can give that impression. Okay. But I want stability in Ayawaso. Okay. It's also a woman MP. And there aren't too many women MP. Mm -hmm. So I support all the women MPs. And they will tell you, the women caucus in parliament are my targets. Mm. Even on the other side. I see. Even on the other side. Yeah. So I, I don't have any candidates for Ayawaso. I, in fact, if I have a candidate, it's the incumbent. Okay. Now, how do you feel also as chief of staff yes. uh, when you listen around and people complain about hardships in the country? Well, I do feel it that it's important to hear what people are saying mm. because definitely... Uh, if people are complaining, then it it's affects government. Mm -hmm. It means that certain things in government 
are not clear to people or government may not be going in the right direction. I think what I would rather say is that there isn't enough education in the media. The balance of uh, the reportage is not there. And I, I, today I was uh, watching Sky News. And it's not about government uh, putting up uh, uh, the prices of gas. It, it's not about uh, food prices almost uh, doubled. It's not about government, but it is about what is happening in the country mm. and the understanding of why we are there. It's not because government doesn't have a good policy. It's because we are a global village and what has happened, what is happening everywhere is affecting us. I think we need to go beyond just the, uh, our own circumstance and begin to educate that if fertilizer prices have doubled outside, if the price of crude has doubled outside, there is no way a, our country cannot. How can the British taxpayer bring their money to just cushion Ghanaians so that we can still buy fuel at very low prices while they are being taxed? It does not mean that government cannot do anything. But I think that we are in a special circumstance. That special circumstance, we cannot trivialize the impact of COVID. Mm. The impact of COVID has uh, uh, reduced a lot of the, um, what will I say, uh, production in many countries. So it, it has affected the whole world, which Ghana cannot be isolated. Okay. And uh, please let me make an appeal mm. that the uh, media, you have an opportunity. It's not what Frema is saying, but it's what you can yourself see and hear and know. So that whilst you want government to do something about it, you should also at the same time share facts mm. that these are things that are happening. How can we as a country also stand up? That is why it is important for everybody to contribute little, 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 little things so that we can all yeah. have a better cushion where these... Um, you, ha you have to use the opportunity to blast through the media. <laughs> no, no. I want to uh, help to yes, strengthen yes. our media. I get you. Because you see that you, you, we listen to other media yeah. and you can see that the media should be the one that brings the pros and cons, the facts yeah. and figures. You know what I mean? We're, you we're doing good at rather that. We're, we're on me, it. Me, if no, I no. come, I'm going to talk all for government. <laughs> yeah. But you should be able to Keep the Help. balance. Keep the balance. Absolutely. Keep the balance. How would you rate the performance of your government? I would say the government has done very well. Rate it over 10. Uh, <laughs> that one I won't say. I think certainly. You're, uh, you're not we sure? Are, no, I am sure. I'm sure that the government is uh, close to A. And I will tell you why. The close to A, that's a B. No, <laughs> it's A or A plus. A or A plus. Yeah, and uh, and with all seriousness. Yeah. And everybody else around the world is seeing what we are doing. We are investing right. Look at how we've invested in uh, controlling COVID. You see, America. You even heard the news yesterday on how things are moving. Uh, the increase in the in, uh, new infections. So it is important for us to recognize what we have done right. Okay. And it's not by chance. We did it right because we decided that we will not let COVID erode everything. 
and containing COVID, we now have an opportunity to open up the country and open up to, um, you know, uh, increasing our production. Okay. Um, uh, by 2024, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwe Kufu mm -hmm. would finish his second term in office. What would that mean for you? Uh, retire from politics? Oh, I will never retire from politics. Okay. Uh, so you will still be active in politics? I will still be in politics, but obviously in a different role. Yes. But the point is that I want my party to break the eight. Mm. I <laughs> feel that the investment that this party makes in people development, mm. human resource development, and commitment to the total advancement of this country is worth uh, repeating this government. And you think uh, you have the personnel to lead that charge after the eight? Oh, we do. Who do you think should lead that? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> when the time comes. Uh, I'm just a little curious. No. I mean, which names come to mind? No, you don't need to mention <laughs> names. We all know the names in the uh, papers. Like which one? But certainly, certainly, I expect that whoever MPP <laughs> choose will be the right person. Do you think Dr. Baumia should take over? It is not for me to say, it's for the. Uh, but would you think he party? would make a great president? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be here then? Yes. Don't, what do you think? No, it's you not about me. Him. I mean, you're closer. Have you work with him in this office. So. I am very <laughs> close to him. I work with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he's discharged his work yeah. and he continues to be. He's the vice president. So would he make and a great vi a never, great president? He has always hmm. been very, very active. Mummy. You know. I am <laughs> Mommy, I'm this is your explanation. Is there. It's no, long it will be. <laughs> I want you to uh, recognize what we are talking about. No, today. I appreciate all and that I he's done, of course. And I want you to see <laughs> that in this country, we've had a lot of vice presidents, haven't we? Absolutely. Objectively, you have had opportunity to assess this vice president what he has brought on board. What he has, he's not a ceremonial president and just uh, go here, go. He is contributing to realization of the vision of His Excellency the President. Okay, Mommy, I, get that. Uh, I get that. But MPP I'm asking delegates, that. <laughs> MPP party yeah. recognize that, then it is for them to decide. But certainly, as a vice president, he has my total admiration yeah. and support. So, mommy, back to my question. Will he make a great president? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you are trying to do. Oh, no, I'm not I don't want your word you to sanction me. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just wondering. I have no one to word you to sanction me because the party says that they have been open nominations. We should not yeah. say what we want to say. But all I'm saying is that He's a great vice president. Okay, all right. Thank well, I, 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 I get that. I mean, this is not me trying to put you to the wall or anything. Oh, but this no, means no, no, just no. trying to I get your opinion. My, you uh, know what I mean. My opinion <laughs> is very straight. Okay. He is a great vice president. No, you president. didn't answer my question. So yeah, it, it, it is, is not an straight. answer. <laughs> anyway, so I mean, <laughs> what, has, what has all of this taught you? Serving as a lecturer, serving in politics, as a member of parliament, now as chief of staff, you've been through life, you've lived family life, you have extended hours of work, you have time for family, you have... What has life taught you? What's the biggest lesson you will say, Mami? Well, <laughs> it's hard to say, but I must confess that I believe very much in experience. I think people should uh, expose themselves or take opportunities to educate themselves and to gain skills that are useful. And I find if I look at my work right from uh, being a people teacher, research assistant, lecturer here, 
even uh, lecturer in Sudan and so on, you pick up skills, mm. which therefore, even in this particular job, I see that I can call on uh, some experience I had whilst I was in NGO. I can call on being a, a parliamentarian. I can call on being a deputy minister or the conflict resolution chair for the uh, party. Mm. I can call on all this. And people should not rush for positions. I think experience matters. Mm. And that is all part of human resource development or capacity building. No matter what area you are asked to serve, serve it. Don't be looking high, high, high. If they say sweep, sweep, and sweep well, mm. so that you can now be asked to mop, and so on and so forth. So life taught me that when you are given an assignment, do it and do it well. Right, right. That the rest, yeah. the best will come to you. Absolutely. Nice because uh, it's a miracle that I am here, Yeah, I will say. But it's also because the president, having worked with me for years, felt that I can do this work. Mm. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. What's your biggest regret? My biggest regret is not doing my PhD, not finishing my PhD. Dr. Frima Ose, mm. never happened. It never happened. Why? Well, the, I started to do my PhD whilst I was a lecturer in Lagos. So I, I, I enrolled in the food science department. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that was the same time after almost uh, six, eight months, I was uh, appointed by FAO okay. to uh, Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. And of course, it was a very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> It was very attractive <laughs> to work in the UN, yeah. and therefore uh, I, I weighed the up and I said I will go to the uh, FAO in yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. And since I, I I never came back to the university yeah. circle, so I've I've missed that opportunity. I even thought whilst I was. Uh, a parliamentarian, I'll still do my PhD. I never found the time. <laughs> so it's one of my biggest regrets. Yeah. Well, we never had Dr. <laughs> Fremont say, but there's a title that we have <laughs> that we cherish even more, and that is Mummy. Thank you. God bless you Thank so you. much. And We're God so grateful you that too. you got to share your story with us. It's been totally amazing, and I've learned a lot from you. Maybe I should leave you at the minute to give a final advice to young people who look up to you. Well, I, I must uh, say that I've been rather grateful for the many